to you, don't worry about your life, what you'll eat or what you'll drink, or about your body, what you'll wear. Isn't life more than food and the body more than clothes? Look at the birds in the sky. They don't sow seed or harvest grain or gather crops into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you worth much more than they are? Thank you. And game service? Yep. Who among you, uh, who among who among you by worrying can add a single moment to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? Notice how the lilies in the fields grow. They don't wear themselves out with work and they don't spin cloth. But I say to you that even Solomon in all of his splendor wasn't dressed like one of these. Okay, thank you. Ellie. Ellie. If God dresses grass in the field so beautifully, even though it's alive today and tomorrow it's thrown into the furnace, won't God do much more for you, you people of weak faith? Therefore, don't worry and say, when, what are we going to eat? Or what are we going to drink? Or what are we going to wear? Thank you. Uh, I am Leah Zeller. Mm -hmm. Uh, verse 32. Gentiles long for all these things. Your Heavenly Father knows that you need them. Instead, desire first and foremost God's kingdom and God's righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, stop worrying about tomorrow, because tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Okay. So, here we've got... that. Let's go back to verse 24. And he says, Jesus says... You can't serve two masters. On the one side, you got money, right? Is that what he says? On the other side, is that wealth? What did he say? Is that wealth? Wealth, okay. On this side, you got God. Okay. These two are competing for your attention. Okay. These two are competing for your allegiance. Money and God. So, you are going to have to make a choice. What choice do most people make? Or a lot of people. Not everyone. A lot of people. What are we tempted? What am I tempted to do? I want to, I worry about money. I want to have more money. I think I have enough of God, but I always want more money. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there are these two, money and God, pulling at us. And he says, and this is where he goes into this thing about the lilies of the field. He said, you know, it, you can worry your butt off. For money. And it's not going to do you any good. So look at the flowers, look at the leaves, of the field, look at the birds in the air. God takes care of them. Okay? So don't spend your life wanting more and more money. Instead, do what God wants you to do. You of little faith. And he has that little phrase in there, you of little faith, where it's a verse. Verse 30, that little thing, you of little faith. Okay? You, so why are you worrying about money? If you have faith, you will do what God wants you to do. And this is where faith and right action come in together for Matthew. Okay? Because even though Matthew says doing the right thing is the most important, he says it takes a certain type of person to do the right thing. And that is a person who's not worried about where their money is coming from. That's a person who wants to do what God wants them to do, which is to care for the sick, the people in prison, the people who are, um, et cetera, et cetera, who are hungry, people who are naked, okay, all those things. So that's where the faith comes in, that you really have to trust God to give you what you need on this earthly life. Focus on doing the right thing. Do the will of my Father. Focus on that. And these other things, clothes, housing, shelter, will be added up to you. So you see that connection between faith and works in Matthew. But Matthew makes a big deal about doing the will. And this, you know, this faith Again, faith doesn't mean saying Jesus is the Lord, Jesus is the Lord, Jesus is the Lord. Faith means putting it into action, trusting God inside, and saying, yeah, I trust God. I'm not going to worry about the things of this world. It's almost
Psalms 5. 